I convinced the client to record that sequence with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And moreover, I recorded that video with the default camera application. I even didn't use applications like Filmic Pro. I decided to risk it because the main advantage of uh, filming with application like Filmic Pro is that you can control the light balance. But the default camera application of the new iPhone 12 Pro Max is so good that the white balance was mostly the same every single time. There were few times when it was a little bit off, but I managed to fix it on post-production. If you would tell me last year that I would record a professional B-roll for a client with the default camera application of the iPhone and that video will be posted all around, I wouldn't believe you. If you're new to the channel, my name is Gabriel, nice to meet you. Now let's jump to the video. A ah, very important question, how I managed to convince the client to shoot with an iPhone. First, I worked before with that client. We did an amazing video in Bali, check it out. And second, to make it more convincing, I reduced the price. If you want to check how much I charge them exactly for that type of video, go and check out uh, the video. The second step of the pre-planning was to understand completely the process. How do you produce those rockets? Because there are around 10 steps and I have to get very familiar of the whole process and the thing is that you have to stylize the process. When you go on set, you don't have to record exactly how the process is going because sometimes to look good on camera, you have to do some changes. The third thing, which was a bummer, is the current situation with the pandemic. Right now in Germany, we are in front of lockdown, so there are a lot of restrictions. That is why we had to film in another workshop. And in that workshop, they didn't have all the machines. For some of the shots, we had to use other tools than what they usually use. And we had to record it in such a way that it still looks professional. And it's not like, guys, what the fuck are you doing with that hammer there? The third thing for the pre-planning phase are the lights. Right now in Germany is November and we are situated in Munich. Munich is near the Alps and the Alps are a magnet for clouds. And as we all know, the iPhones have really small sensor and if you don't supply them with enough light, uh, the image will not be good. That's why I got two lights. My main light was Godox SL150 with a softbox. I think the softbox is 90 centimeters with a grid. My second light was the smaller brother, Godox SL60. I used that light as a kicker, plus I used a cover gels. Now with the gels, it's a really interesting topic because the older versions of iPhones don't handle at all cover light good. So if you record a subject with two types of light and one of them is covering the subject in blue, the whole image is falling apart. Luckily with the new iPhone 11s and with the iPhone 12, you don't have that and you can easily cover grade that type of footage on post-production. The first thing you have to do when you arrive on such type of workshop is to decide where it will be your first scene and after that clean it. Because usually when you work in a workshop, it's a mess around. When you record video, there is no Photoshop. You can't remove stuff. Or you can, but I don't want to spend uh, two weeks in After Effects. After that, for the first scene, I did uh, several different takes. We were experimenting. After checking the videos on my phone, I realized that my opening scene with the subject walking down the alley, it doesn't look good at all. And that's why I moved to the Peter McKinnon and Mati Hapuya favorite shot to record legs walking. Next shot is with the electrical saw. Guys, sorry if I'm not uh, naming the machines uh, properly in English. I never been in a carpentry shop. I've been once in Bulgaria, but I know the Bulgarian names. I have no idea how the things are named in English, so I'll give them names. Now we are to the electrical saw, and here you have to be really careful because we train the shot several times and we train it to look good in the camera. And when you work with such heavy machines, you have to pay attention not to cut your finger because sometimes the wood can stuck. That happened to us. Now, here is coming one very interesting tip. The wood that we were cutting for the video is not the same wood with which we produce the racket. I told in advance to the guys to prepare two templates for the racket. One template we pre-glue before the shoot. Uh, the reason is because the glue takes around 20 to 30 minutes to get dry. And in the next scene, we have to show how we are gluing the pieces together. So I need one template that is not glued and one template that is glued. In that way, I'm very flexible and I'm not wasting time and waiting the template to get dry. Because imagine, we just record how we glue the template, everything is good, we glue it together and now we have to wait for half an hour doing nothing. 
Now here with the gluing template, I had two ideas. One was to put your finger in the glue and directly to apply the glue with the finger. The other option was to use the brush. We recorded the first option with the brush. It looked awesome. So we even didn't consider to do it with the finger because already with the brush was looking amazing. Next, we had to polish the wood and there is one amazing scene from the Peter's Bureau, how the guy is polishing and one piece of the wood is flying in the air. And I really wanted to try to replicate something like that. Unfortunately, for us, it didn't work the same way. So we tried to fake it with those wooden particles. I don't know how they're called in English. I gave them the name uh, wooden snow because they're mostly like a snow particles. It didn't look good at all. That's why we moved to the electrical version of that machine. With the electrical version, a lot of wooden parts were flying. Of course, it works better when you do it manually, but with the electrical one is also exciting as well. Now, the other tip here is uh, never experiment on the only template you have. That's why we took a piece of wood and before we are ready to shoot, we did all the experiments on that piece of wood. We didn't try to experiment on the template. We have to execute that shot in maximum three tries because otherwise the wooden racket will become very thin and we cannot record anything after that. Of course, we have second template, but we still have to glue it. The next scene is drawing with the pencil and here we wanted to do it a little bit more epic. Unfortunately, the costume our actor was wearing didn't have any pockets. So what we did to fix the situation is to put a little bit of tape in the inner part of the costume. I bet that mostly nobody realized that the pen was hanging in the air. Now it's coming the cutting part and it's here where I mostly was my finger. But there are also some other interesting uh, things here. That is the machine we were missing. So we had to fake it. We had to use the manual version. Here I experimented a lot. I shot a little bit under, I shot above, I did a lot of wipe transitions, but the best one I found at the end, it was to do a top-down angle. And then I did a rotational transition because the next scene is the drilling machine where there is a handle and you can rotate it. So from the very beginning, I knew that I'll do a rotational transition for that shot. I also recorded a lot of close-ups of the drilling, but they didn't made it to the final cut. Somehow they didn't look so good. The next one is the polishing. That one is not so interesting, not, nothing to discuss to hear so much. But the next one is the varnishing. The varnishing, we faked it so much, but it looks awesome. I really wanted to show how the guys are spraying some really nice, tasty slow motion, and I wanted to spray the phone over, but I didn't want to use the chemicals. That's why we put water. The advantage of the iPhone 12 Pro Max is that it's waterproof. They claim that it's waterproof and my cinematic light died. I'm not anymore so beautiful, but let's continue. The next shot is the most important one, is the final shot where you have to show the product. And here actually I was struggling quite a lot. In the beginning, the angle was really wrong. We tried to choreograph the movement to look nice, but every time I was recording it and checking it on the phone, something was wrong. I wasn't satisfied. And then I changed my angles. So if something doesn't work, always try to change the angles, go closer, go further, try from top, try from bottom. You have to experiment if something doesn't look good. When I did the top shot, everything fitted together. It was looking amazing. Now, the problem was the choreograph. The idea was to throw the ball and to hit it two times. And I wanted really the ball to come closer to the lens so it gets bigger and then goes down and two times like that. Then we did at least 15 times till we get the perfect shot. After we had our final shot, I run to do the post-production. And here, the second most important thing is the sound design.
If you enjoy that type of videos, but you want to see more detailed tutorial, go out and check out my course. Now, don't forget to put like, subscribe, and don't forget to smile. Here is the video one more time with the sound. Preparing for the summer, don't you see? 